What's up, everyone? This is Marky e. Basie, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I've been wanting to connect with you for some time already. Um, so I'm excited to finally get to talk to you and I'm excited to be talking about this upcoming new album that's about to drop. Uh, so as we kind of dive in to this record, Little Men, which is dropping next week, the 8th of October, uh, talk to me, take me into this, to the studio, the creative process behind this record. Um, just because I see that from the stuff that you've released so far, like there's been various producers that you've been collaborating with. So what kind of impact does that have in your creative process when you're working on a full body of work like this record? Yeah. Um, well, the way that we, the way we did this album was very collaborative. I think a lot of artists usually take sessions, you know, throughout the year or whatever, and they might go in with this guy, then go in with this person, then go in with this person, then throw all the best songs on one album. Uh, but for me, we went, we, we started, me and the main pieces, like the main collaborators, we all rented a house in Palm Springs in February. And we kind of, that's where we did like, basically made the demos of the album. We made, probably recorded like 20 songs or something, ideas out there. And we already had, I mean, I probably had like 100 ideas, you know, for the album uh, in total. So we went out there. And that's kind of where we just got the ideas cooking. And I spent time with, uh, it's mostly like Pete Jonas, Cal Basie, Nick Knack, and this guy, Omar Edwards, um, are the main people on the album that I worked with. Um, so we went out there, got everything started, and then we kind of came back and just chipped away at it over the next six months, um, which was a painful process uh, because, you know, I was like, re-singing shit and replaying parts, rearranging, just trying to make it, just trying to give each song the love it deserves. And I think, uh, I think I made everyone crazy and I pushed everyone as much as I could. Um, and then, you know, listening to it now, there's definitely, I'm definitely happy that I did that because I like to just go the extra mile. I feel like subconsciously, you can tell when an artist really like tried. <laughs> And uh, and really put their all into something versus like it was just like kind of a on the spot, you know, free flowing thing. So, you know, I, I push it as far as I can go. And then one day it just hits me like, OK, this is done. I have to stop. And I pretty, I pretty much took it to that point. And I can't believe it's coming out next week. You said it was just true as well. When you say you went the extra mile, like how would you how would you compare that vocally? Uh, what did you do different vocal wise with with these tracks? And did you feel that this was a challenge that you had to kind of learn how to sing a certain way or is how yeah, to project okay. a certain a per, way? I'll give you a perfect example. The I was listening to Empire of the Sun a lot, hmm. and uh, I was like, God damn! Like when he hits these like falsettos the blend he gets on his vocal it sounds like there's like he stacked himself 12 times in certain parts of his songs maybe like four times but it sounds so good on the ear like you can't help but gravitate towards that sound that he gives you and i was like i have to do that on my album and i have this new song i just released called bowie and in the pre-chorus like i did it and it took me like months to figure that out how to blend it's me and my guitar player singing and just to figure out how to get the blend right there's like these breathy highs these more tone over here and then like a, a more full voice lead and i did it but i couldn't have you know if i would have just went with the first version it wouldn't hit the same way and that's probably one of the best parts of the whole album sonically so it's little things like that where i'm just trying to it's not like a competition, but it's like just trying to do something in the vein of great artists that you appreciate and are into. And, you know, that's what it was. And there's definitely parts of the album that I'm going to listen and be like, damn, I could have went farther there. But you do. You have to stop at some point. And the album's never really done. You just have a date that you have to put that on. So and you have a manager. As you do those those falsettos, like you did mention with, with Bowie, 
Um, is that something that you kind of had to kind of like relearn to sing or, or learn to sing a different way in order to reach those falsettos that you did? Well, I was just practicing this morning. There's, yes, I'm always trying to get better. The problem, one of the problems I have is when I'm working, writing an album, I'm usually like drinking and partying heavily and like just being free and kind of doing carefree, which isn't the best for your voice, which is kind of why it took so long too. Like some of the, I'll be in the vibe and I'll be like, we, you know, in Palm Springs, we didn't sleep. Like we were being nocturnal. So everything was backwards and like it didn't, it wasn't conducive to like technically, you know, singing correctly. Um, so I had to like wean myself out of that and be like sober to go sing right for the album. So I, I did some of that. And then there's like, there's a part uh, on the new, it's a song called Nothing in This World. It'll come out next week where I'm like singing up to like a high, like maybe a G, which is crazy high for me. Um, and I can't even do that. Like, on command, so I'm gonna have to like build up to actually doing that live. I don't know how it's like a Prince note. Um, so yeah, it's like I, I put little challenges. When I first started, I couldn't sing shit. People don't really know, but I could barely sing "You and Me" when I made "You and Me," and I feel like turning it, practicing it, and that song's easy to sing. But I just I was behind, like I hadn't really sang. Like I've always been, a, I've been a singer since I was you know, 19 or whatever, but not really. Like, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so. That's crazy that you say that just because I've always, you know, ever since listening to you the very first time, like, I've always been like, damn, this guy seems like just a natural singer. Like, uh, you know, any note you give him, it just comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's I, so I, crazy I, that you're saying that. <laughs> no, I definitely, I believe what I sing, you know, so people believe me. Also, I think mm -hmm. I'm not faking it, but I'm definitely, you know, didn't grow up singing, didn't like, didn't have any uh, instruction, but I'm learning. It's, it's fun, you know, like singing is like a, it's physical. So it's almost like, you know, these, you're not just going to have your perfect voice forever. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to take like these next four or five years and get, I'm just trying to get better, you know, um, before I'm like, an old man who can't who doesn't got it <laughs> as far as the songwriting goes with this album uh how do you feel it's kind of evolved and do you feel that you've you kind of stepped out of your comfort zone in, in order to speak about topics that you didn't really talk about before um you know it's like i don't really put my politics or my social views in my music too often hmm. um so there's not so much uncharted territory in terms of content on this album. Like every album I've made is really about trying to grow up, trying to heal yourself from being heartbroken, childhood trauma. And like, I, it's really always been about me exercising my demons and trying to, you know, help myself feel better. That's really what my albums usually are. And I think that's, People were to that. Uh, this album had like this mental health kind of slant. This 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 album is more just, I guess, I would say the last two albums were like me, really, um, battling with this like Hollywood thing, mm -hmm. uh, and just battling with like, um, girlfriends and just. Like I, I felt I was struggling with it and now I'm not. Now it's like I made peace with all that and I kind of got over what was, you know, what was a five, six year long process for me. So this is the first album that I've written, not from the standpoint of like, oh, I'm heartbroken and sad. It's just like, it's good. I'm good now. Um, so that was a lot different. It's I still am talking about, you know, what I've been through the past five or six years relationships that didn't work out and yeah. you know friendships and what the fuck do I even talk about this album? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 I think there's like a piece with it now like I mastered it I figured it out um and I think it makes the songs better they don't they, they sound much more mature when I listen I you know 
I can tell that like, oh, I'm not, like I was a little emo before and now it's really not. It's more, uh, it's stronger and more, uh, yeah, just more mature, more elevated. Your experience of being so vulnerable on those previous records, uh, would you say that that kind of helped you uh, um, be comfortable opening up the way that you have in the past? Or do you feel like being vulnerable is still something that doesn't come as easy for you? I think in life, being vulnerable does not come easy for me. But in music, it does. I'm not afraid. There's a record on this album that people are, it's going to, people up it's probably my most vulnerable i've ever got on a song yeah. um it's just me rapping on over a guitar for like three minutes three and a half minutes um but yeah music has always been the place where i allowed myself to do that even singing is of just for me like i like if you don't grow up singing and don't come from a musical background like i was a basketball player in high school, in my senior year, for some reason, I was drawn to that, and I would like sing in front of my whole high school, like, and that was ridiculous. Like, I can't even looking back. I don't even know why I thought that was acceptable or okay. Like, and if all my friends were like, "Bro, are you you're gonna sing? Like, what?" Uh, so, you know, I went from being like a jock basically, and that was my whole life, like just smoke weed, play basketball, and like holler at girls, but you know, normal high school suburban shit. And I wasn't part of like the muse, like, you know, there's always like bands in high school or whatever. And I wasn't part of that. And I I just let myself sing and be vulnerable like that. Um, and I have no idea really where that came from. It's still it's bewildering to me to this day because it ended up being my whole life. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think... In the past, all my best songs was when I was just being honest, telling my story and yeah, letting myself, you know, just bearing my my truth. Now back to that that song that you said you you're getting the most vulnerable on this record. Because you are opening up so much, uh, and it's just basically you and the guitar, did you find it harder to figure out which producer you wanted to work with for that song in particular in order to get the most emotion uh well there's there's no possible. producer on it there's no oh, man it's literally just a guitar loop uh my homie count he's a producer on the album but he didn't even like it it was like freaking him out uh <laughs> i think because like he knows me and just hearing me do that he's like bro i can't rock with this this is too much um but then we started playing it for people and it was like a lot of people's favorite favorite one um so Got yeah. <laughs> now I'm curious because um, you you were saying like high school you were a jock and then you go to the music, but then you also were involved in a a group project um, early on. So going from that group project to now being that solo artist, like how much of a difference does it have uh, in you like writing and being able to like express yourself to the world? I mean, my, my first band, 2AM Club, was like a democracy, you know? So every, even creatively. Um, so it was like five or six of us, depending if we had a drummer or not. Um, but every song I wrote, it was a committee of people, like sort of engaging with it before it was even finished. And so it could be stifling at times. Um, but what's funny is I ended up, even though I'm not in a band now, I ended up surrounding myself with staples who don't, you know, and, and I conduct myself in a very collaborative manner. Um, but it's been easier to be solo because at the end of the day, I know it's my shit and I can decide what I want to decide. Whereas in my band, it was really like, I could write a song and they could be like, no, we don't like it. Uh, we're not going to do it. And now if I write a song and I like it, it's, you know, it's mine. I can do what I want. Um, so creatively, you know, it. I don't really think about it too much because it's it's almost like a tragedy. That was like, a, that was everything in my life between ages 17 to 25 was my band. And, you know, we, we started before the internet age. We started in 2007, eight. You know, so this is so long ago, like, it's just crazy to think how much I put into that. 
but it's also such a long it feels like a different lifetime it feels like a parallel universe at this point that um because even the industry was so much different at that time we did showcases and open mics and we busked on the street and like that's how we you know and now everything is about being viral and being on tiktok and the internet and it's all politics now um so that was like a very pure beautiful thing to be a part of and it's still in me but i really don't think about it too much i got the opportunity to talk to Greya last week or two weeks ago uh, an mm-hmm. artist who you recently got to collaborate with and one of the things and you kind of mentioned it earlier uh one of the things that she loved uh about you was that you don't sing anything you don't believe in um and you kind of mentioned that earlier as well so for you personally like what made you what what made you fall in love with this song lightning with Greya and want to be part of this collaboration and also be part of the entire project because you're also in the video with her yeah well one interesting thing too is her manager was my first band's manager so that's like family to me you know Damn. so when she hit, when she hit me up about her it was already going to be a yes like i have to i owe them so much because they like literally took me from absolute zero to like having a record deal when i was like 21 you know um but then when i listened like greg can sing her face off I don't think people really know. Like, when you hear a record, you don't necessarily, because there's so much production involved nowadays, but she is like a true talent, vocal talent. And the song was just so dope. Um, and this dude, Isaiah, who produced it, is also like a genius. I've been, I just started following him on Instagram. <clears throat> and the, the demo vocal was so, so good. And I was like, wow, it's like a challenge too to just get all these falsettos and these runs and everything you put in there was so good um so it was just i mean it was a no-brainer for me it was already family to begin with and then you know you know how hard this this industry is becoming more and more saturated mm-hmm. which makes it harder and harder to cut through but i think Greta has a really good shot because she can really sing she's got great production and she's a really good songwriter so i was honestly happy to be a part of it it was, it was cool that's awesome. Now, going back to this upcoming album, uh, Little Ben, which drops October 8th, um, what do you feel was the biggest challenge for you in order to make this record happen? Just because, you know, we've had uh, the craziest two years already. Um, but for you as an artist, like, what what challenged you the most in order to finalize this record? Um, well, if I'm being honest, uh, the biggest challenge was just managing the uh the personal aspects of my camp like we've all been together for four or five years and i think there was so much frustration within all of us i think i make people frustrated because i change my mind a lot about what i like what direction i want to go in and then there was and you know we haven't been touring we haven't really felt like we were anything you know um in these past couple years if you take if you take live music away from someone like me, you know, my my producers and my guys can't see me winning on the road, can't see shows being sold out. They're just like, it feels like we're doing nothing. Um, so the hardest part was just getting from like that 85%, that last 15% over the hump because guys were, and it's not just guys, but <laughs> people were unmotivated at times. They weren't sending files of this, like, just organizing everyone and getting everyone on the same page, same mission, same mindset was really difficult. And it took, I don't know if my, some of my relationships might be changed forever now because I had to just kind of make things more professional because we're so close in my camp. Like we're best friends. And sometimes it's when people come around us, like other artists, they're always like, man, I wish I was a bassy. Like I've heard that from people in everyone's camp, people that are with huge mega stars on down the line, you know, love. Like, I wish I was a bassy. People say that to me all the time because we we do have the most fun and we love each other the most. But sometimes that makes things impossible as well, because if you love someone and they really feel this way about something, you have to listen to their opinion. And then if they you know, if you if you're like, oh, I don't I don't I think it should be this way. It, like things get to a standoff so 
the hardest part was really like sticking up for myself and like this is my shit i have to it's gonna come down on me you know if it sucks if it's good so at the end of the day you have to just put your foot down and, and finish everything um but i'm pretty like we did it so and all my albums have been like that but this time i really was like on my own it felt like as like the finisher to make it happen um i paid out of my pocket too like this is mine you know like i didn't it's my money my everything there's no major label there's no one to fund it it's like we did this ourselves so damn that's i mean that that's tough but i feel like that's even more rewarding once you know everything gets released this record's gonna drop in less than a week and i feel like the fans have been waiting for it so i i personally have been waiting for it so i'm looking forward to that and um thank you again for taking the time to do this dude anytime bro appreciate you